It takes designers to make a pair of kicks a reality, but it takes players to make those kicks into a phenomenon. Six pro players were chosen by Nike in 1982 to represent the best aspects of this iconic shoe. In what has become a legendary poster, these six, known as the original six, pose on an airstrip dipped in flight suits meant to explore the galaxy while they rock sneakers that went on to conquer the Earth. Basketball kids wanted to emulate their heroes, and their heroes were Moses Malone and Bobby Jones and Jamal Wilkes and people like that, so you saw that and you wanted to dress like them, and that was cool to basketball kids. These guys were just iconic heroes, mythological creatures, you know? And then of course, any kid is just gonna be like, what is he wearing? Like, why, what is giving him the ability to do those moves? When I was a young boy growing up, uh, my two older brothers, you know, they used to rock airs on the schoolyard, you know, with the strap on off. It's, it's, it's our whole flavor. Original six, you know, you got the Air Force team, and that was, you know, that's what you wanted to aspire to be. When they sold Air Force Ones, they sold the sneaker and gave you a poster. You might have got one of uh, Bobby Jones uh, for his defense. Uh, you might have got one of uh, Moses. Posters were the internet and the cable television of that time period. A kid would take a poster, put it on his wall, and that was the game communicating to that kid. It was the elite group. I mean, you didn't have that many people that wore Air Force Ones. If you couldn't play, you couldn't wear Air Force Ones. You know, because a guy will come up to you and say, your game ain't tight enough for you to wear Air Force Ones, bro. So I think you need to give Air Force Ones up or get a game up. Basketball was consistently more efficient back in the day. You had certain players who specialized in certain things. They came out, they hit the floor, they provided those things every game, uh, every season. If you could come down court every time, perform a certain play and, and score, then you was going to keep doing that play. You was going to keep making that move or doing that play until someone stopped you. Moses' game was epic. You know, Moses is a legend and his game was epic. When we look at the Air Force One and think about what the players who wore the Air Force One, how they kind of uh, gelled and meshed with the shoe, I think that Moses' consistent nature and his epic nature are parallel with the consistency of the Air Force One for 25 years and beyond. All the original six players were defensive specialists, but Michael Cooper, or Coop, was consistently on that defensive end just putting it down all the time. Every once in a while in a clutch situation, he could come down court, somebody give up the ball to him, boom, Coop hit that three-pointer. Coop could deliver. Bobby Jones, sixth man of the year award. Uh, Bobby Jones would come off the bench and put in work. The Philadelphia fans, when they saw him coming onto the court, they knew, okay, if everything else goes wrong in this game, I know this cat right here is about to put it down. I know he's about to put in work. Jamal Wilkes, smooth as silk. Cats on the street like to say his, his game was butter. It, it was kind of uh, on the DL sometimes, very quiet, almost like an assassin. We come in like a thief in the night, and drop 30 on you, and before you know it, this cat got stats on you that ain't nobody had on you all year. Michael Thompson was that type of player who you could call on. He was a defensive specialist who could provide you some offense. But again, he symbolized the Air Force One's resilient nature and the versatility and the confidence it takes to play at that level. Calvin Nat, Nat King Cole. Later on in life, Calvin Nat became a mortuary owner. I've said before, I think that he is the type of player to bury his opponents. You know, the Air Force One is a very prolific shoe. It's on feet all over the world. Calvin Nat would come out on the court every night and provide you with a prolific stream of points you would know you've been scored on. They never advertised this sneaker, and, it, and it's an icon. There's never been a commercial. The ones who know about them know that there was a poster with six guys on it who were super cool, know that Moses Malone wore them in the championships and they were incredible. And I think that's what made that original six poster so special because it represented the shoe. It wasn't just, you know, a cat dunking or, you know, standing in front or holding a shoe or whatever. It was them out on that airstrip about to take off into, you know, the future. And 25 years later, everything that that poster said is proven to be true. So, I mean, it's, the sneaker got a history just like the game. From 82 to now, count the years. If there's one uh, thing that probably you use the word rewarding, as most rewarding, is that the shoe at 25 years later can still perform 
uh, at an MBA level. That it's not something that everybody has gone uh, past and said, oh, I would never wear that shoe. Put my heart in each cut and each move In tremendous shape holes I can't lose I survived and passed all the tests yeah. Can't nobody tell me that yeah. I'm not the best